Hello YouTube and welcome to the character study on our old boy Emigway part 7. As you can tell from the date, this episode is a little bit early and the reason why is it's Christmas. So Menti Christmas to you all. As I promised, I am providing two episodes of the character study, one on Bloho and one on Emigway for this Christmas season. It's going to be a one-off thing, don't think it's going to be uh, something recurrent on the channel. We will be back to once a month afterwards and we'll continue this series until the work is done. And today I don't really have anything special, we're actually just going to continue the character study on Blahino. But before I start, I want, in the spirit of the holiday, to help you and give you the chance to reflect on the luck you have in your life and how grateful you should be that you're most likely going to spend Christmas with people you love. You're most likely going to spend Christmas in a place where you feel comfortable. And when that is the case, when that happens, I always think that it's something that we need to cherish because there are people out there who are going to have Christmas dinner alone and their diner table is actually going to be a, a box that they squat on. They won't actually be able to eat anything because their teeth are too rotten and they can't chew anymore. And because of their actions, they alienated themselves from every single person in their life. And therefore, they are destined to end up alone. And since we are not that person, I think that any situation that we might find ourselves in is always a step up. So, that little thing aside, we'll get into it. But first, announcement for the people who were sort of looking for it. All of the previous installments are available, so you can get back and watch them. I ran tests. They are all protected, none of them can be struck, so we're all fine there. And in terms of people who ask me if the episodes could be seen somewhere else, yes, they can, but I'm not going to be the one to upload them. Keep in mind, and that's important and it goes for the entire channel, that all of my content, content is public domain, meaning that I do not pursue copyright strikes and I do not own anything. So if you want to re-upload the entire channel, even on YouTube, I don't care. It's up to you. I don't, it's, it's none of my problem. And for the videos and the character study, it's the same. If you're afraid they're going to be taken down, if you're afraid this channel might be deleted, which it might, it's YouTube. One day you might log in and this channel is gone, which by the way, if that happens, I'm not creating a new one. In that case, if you would feel more comfortable, download the videos and re-upload them on YouTube. You can use the same name, a different name, you can give me credit or not, I don't care, it doesn't matter. So for all and every person who asked, yes, you have the permission, go ahead. That being said, when it comes to um, actually trying to get the video shut down, it's not necessarily that there was no efforts uh, provided or, or furnished because Bloho was really trying hard, but he didn't manage. And so in a last ditch effort, in the last video, he used sock accounts. Of course, he couldn't do it himself because he's a coward. He threatened me with legal action. Issue is, I know for a fact that he has never sued anyone on YouTube Fitness for, what, five years. So I know that I'm safe. And for Bloho, I mean, you should know that because you're a grown man, but a threat is only as effective as its conclusion and its execution. Well, if you threaten people for five years and nothing happens, people are going to know you're a big phony, which I know. So I'm not afraid of you. I'm going to continue those videos every single month. And you know what? If you keep using the suck accounts and you don't behave properly, I'm just going to up the frequency to what? Every three weeks? I can do that. It doesn't change anything for me. So again, behave. I'm okay with you using suck accounts and having meltdowns in the comments, but within the realm of what is, uh, you know, um, what, what is the term? Acceptable. Okay, don't act like a badass. We both know you're a coward and a wimp. So just stay within the realm of what you know best, which is crying about me calling you fat and stick to that. We'll make fun of you with the other commenters on the channel. You'll provide us with mans and we'll move on. We'll, we'll keep that little tradition going. It's all in good fun, remember? So that's that. Another announcement is that Bloho actually hired someone in my family to destroy the evidence. As you can see from this, there was coffee dropped directly on the document, but don't worry about it. It wasn't fully destroyed. I was able to salvage most of it. And the person who was hired by the fake Merc 
is going to spend the rest of their time in jail for sabotage, so we're safe. Um, but again, the try with Bloho, always be careful with the fake muck. He always strikes from behind. So that being said, I don't have much to say besides that. We're going to dive straight into it with more of the stuff that I uncovered, more of the lies that Blo uh, Blahino has spread throughout the days, and more ments, as always. So, last week we actually spoke about a ton of stuff. We spoke about the uh, ASMR channel, the philosophy channel, the reason why he started pretending to be a fake mook. And in terms of um, introduction today, I want to talk about a certain cabin in uh, Colorado and his living situation as a whole. So for the people who don't know, the living situations of Blahino are extremely well documented and they of course range from poverty to government assistance, meaning that he's never actually owned a house or property in his life. And I want to make a video recapping the entire timeline of his life. I have the information, I just need to make it, but that might be for later. But in terms of house, we know that he started in the UK where he lived with a wife. He then moved back to the US where he spent a certain amount of time living with his sister. And then the sister put him out, so he had to go live with a girlfriend at what I believe was a trailer park. And he actually lived with the grandmother of the girlfriend that we will also get into. And then he actually managed to move into his quote-unquote own place, which from what we know is uh, actually subs uh, subsidized by the government as well. And he still lives there to this day. That being said, if you listen to him, he gives a completely different uh, turn of events and... If you actually listen to him, he used to live in a gigantic mansion owned by his parents. And when people told him that it was a little bit strange that he lived with his parents when he was in his 20s, he, I think even in his 30s, he exclaimed that it was okay because the house was so big that he had a lot of privacy. Of course, that never happened because his parents don't own such a house. What happened, however, is that he lived with his sister who apparently has a lot of money. But of course... When you're a grown adult, it's always a little bit shameful to say, oh yeah, actually with my sister. So he made up another lie and his latest lap, and it's not really the latest one because it's been two years in the making, is that he actually is going to purchase a cabin in Colorado. I don't know where this idea came from with him. It's always something he copied. And so I personally dug a bit and the one person I can think of that he might have copied for the idea of living in Colorado is Brian Shaw. Because I know that Shaw has a big property slap in the middle of Colorado. So I don't know if he thinks that by telling that people are going to connect him with Shaw or something. But his big lap is that he's going to own a house there. He's going to be able to go hunting and he's going to actually own a herd of bisons. For someone who couldn't even take care of a dog, I would love to see him take care of bisons. Because I have family who takes care of, care of cows. It's already tough enough to take care of cows. I don't even imagine how tougher it is for bisons. Big, the big thing and the good news would be that most likely he would get run over at some point. Because he wouldn't be really, you know, able to assess the situation around him. And one of the bison would just knock him over. One can only hope. But since he'll never actually be able to buy this because he has no money, it's never going to happen. And it's always interesting to see that with people who lie all the time that they can't just one-up you. They can't just lie above their situation. They want to lie way, way, way on top. And so for him, who is on government assistance, instead of just saying that he, has, he makes a decent living but nothing crazy, no. He went straight for the, I'm a big baller, I make hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I'm going to own a massive mansion in the middle of Colorado. Colorado, which, by the way, is one of the most expensive states, at least in terms of uh, increase of the property value, because it's extremely hype, quote-unquote. People want to move there. So again, insane how someone who's been lying for decades at this point is unable to provide a lie that is actually sustainable. And the funny part too is that he started saying that because people pointed out that he lived in a condo, but the condo was at his name because you can pretty much access documents and private information on the internet very easily. And therefore, once you find the address where someone lives, you can tell if their name is on the lease or if they actually uh, 
own that condo. And for him, he doesn't. And yet, he still claims he does for some reason. And he claims it's a, a, an office, like a business building that he just bought for, to make videos. First off, even if that was true, who would do that? Who would be stupid enough to buy a gigantic condo just to lift, to make a, a gym in the living room, and then what we called? That's a terrible investment. Plus, if you look at, but that I might not need to say that yet, but again, if you look at the documents for names are supposed to be there for official purposes, it's just not there. And all of that, all of that stems from one lie. And that one lie is something that he said to be able to camouflage the fact that he doesn't own a house. And it just devolves into an entire list of other things that he's trying to hide and camouflage. And it's the same for the cars, it's the same for the, um, the his, his lifestyle, pretty much. Because across the board, we, what we know from him is that he doesn't own a car, he doesn't own a house, he doesn't really own anything at this point. And the, the big thing with uh, Blahino is that he needs to propel his wealth, he needs to show his wealth. He detests the facts and the idea that we know he's broke. And therefore, it's also uh, something that I want you to keep in mind because it's an argument I'm going to use to, uh, to showcase more of his lies as we go on. But he's the type of person that if he made, I don't know, $10,000 cash, he would show you the cash. He would make a video with the cash on the table. And if he doesn't do it, he means it doesn't have it. Same for the car. When he used to have cars, he would recall himself driving around or he would record himself next to the car, or he would say on camera he has a car. And since he stopped, we can tell for certainty that he doesn't have a car. Do you know many people living in the US, especially in a big metropolitan city, especially the type of people who are supposed to like to hunt, who don't own a car? Relying on public assistance in some of these smaller cities is a death sentence. You can't get to your job, which in his case is okay, I guess, because he doesn't have a job, and Costco doesn't close until six, so he can take the bus whenever to go grab Jasmine Rice. But it's again a showcase how poverty his lifestyle is and how completely destitute he truly is at this point. Despite the entire LARP about him making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of coaching, as if, as if there was even that amount of money in there and as if people who hire him. He basically, his channel is completely dead so there's no outreach. His reputation is in the gutter who would hire him? Look at him. He doesn't compete in powerlifting. He looks like trash. What same person would think, oh yeah, that's the guy. Like, I'm going to, to pay that guy $250 to be, to be coughed. No one would say that. It's not possible. In terms of the living with the sister thing, the entire, the entire family of Bloho is a mess. I don't want to dive too deep into that because some of these people are already dead and I don't want to disturb the dead too much, especially for the innocent people who haven't done anything. I do feel for them because they were forced to be connected with Blablina, which must have sucked. Meaning I feel for his sister that she had to grow up in a house with that loser. Because you know that that guy actually dove through the, like, the dirty laundry of, her, of his sister. He's the type of guy who does that. And so they all cut contact, of course. She was nice enough to take him in when he was kicked out of the UK. And I don't know how long it lasted. Eventually, she managed to just shove him away. I, some people say things happened and it's the reason why she, even she was done with him. I don't have proof. Keep in mind that the things I talk about here are all prove, uh, proven, sourced with screenshots and videos. Anything that I couldn't really prove, I don't talk about just because there's already so much to discuss. But the entire uh, sister thing is interesting because as he was living with his sister again, he lied about it, he refused to admit it. And it shows the type of lifestyle he's led and what he's always been, which is a dependent. Because if you look at the entire timeline of his life, he lived with his parents, then eventually some poor woman decided to marry him for some reason. Most likely she had a mental disability or she got bonked on the head at some point. He was a dependent to that woman because she worked for him. She kept him alive and not the other way around. At some point, he had to go back to the US. So he was with his sister. 
And after that, he managed to snag Moon Cookie and he was sort of making a living off of YouTube plus the, the welfare money. And so he sort of managed to float a little bit, but still he was a dependent on the taxpayer's money and on the girlfriend's money. So at no point is in, enti in his entire history was he a man. He was never self-sufficient. He was never independent. He was never able to actually pull his weight. He's been a weight on his family, the people who surround him, and the society he inhabits for 20 years. This is a parasite. This is the very definition of a parasite. He provides nothing of value, absolutely nothing. And you can cite the channel, maybe, but at this point, why would you look to him for information when you can get the same info on Google because he just copy pasts it and there are so many better polything channels. Off of the top of my head, Candido, Alan Flo, both of these are better than him. They are stronger than him at lower body weights. So why would you waste your time with someone like him who is not intelligent in the slightest, who is not articulate, who just repeats the same thing again and again with a poor quality camera, a poor quality mic. It's just pure garbage. And at this point, he survives via a certain amount of tricks that I'm going to explain, but he is mostly being kept alive again by the taxpayer. So the, life, the, the lifestyle again of someone who should be extremely grateful to even be kept alive, but somehow manages to try and sell up his routine and his environment and make people believe that he actually is like sort of a, like a millionaire playboy. It's like he doesn't understand that we have eyes. We see the way he lives. I mean, he records in his apartment. We see the poverty apartment. We see the poverty equipment. At no point is anyone fooled. And yet he continues. That's because, of course, he is a vulnerable narcissist and therefore he cannot really help it. He's going to continue lying about his life until he dies. But that's that for this whole situation. I want to talk about the Christian phase that he went through a few years ago. Because for the people who remember that phase, for one month, Bloho started to say that he was saved by Jesus, that he actually found Jesus. And he, that's also the time where he transitioned from the drama videos, what, which made up the bulk of his channel, by the way, and the only information, informational and uh, the pork mode training. And when that happened, he claimed that it was because he was a, a, a newborn Christian. Of course, that's a lie, because every time his mouth opens, it's to lie. So that's, again, a lie. And the reason behind that was because he was seeing a woman by, uh, back in those days that I'm not going to name. And that woman was a devout Christian. And therefore, because he has no personality to speak of and he's a wimp and a simp, he tried to copy what he thought she would like to be able to score. And so he pretended to be a Christian. He didn't work, of course. Um, and I say, of course, I mean, he managed to get women that way back in the past. So she got lucky for some reason. She sensed it or she might have looked him up and she ran. But the funny part, too, is that when that entire thing f completely fell, he sort of tried to keep it, keep it up for his channel. Because it was the time where, and I don't have pure information on that because I don't work at YouTube, but I know for a fact that that's the time where there was a strong transition on the, uh, the amount of punishments that were wielded on drama videos, where YouTube was sort of cracking down on it. Uh, the drama videos could be struck, you could get copyright strike for it, you could actually get your channel deleted. And because he's very afraid of losing his channel, because it's the only thing he has in his life, he actually had to transition. And the Christian thing was a perfect excuse. So it was one, to get a woman, and two, to not have to apologize. Because if he didn't have the Christian thing, he would have had to say, look, I was an idiot, I was making clicks and views because I was creating drama, and I'm moving on. If he had done that, it would have been sort of respectable, but of course, it's blow who we're talking about. He can never admit blame. Never. If you find me a video of him where he actually admits to having done something wrong, then I don't know, I'll just email you eight bucks because I don't think it's possible. He always finds a reason or a way to blame it on someone else. And here, same logic. He sort of utilized the Christian faith to be able to say, oh, 
now it's all forgiving from now on and I'm done with the negativity. First off, that's not how it works. You can't be a garbage pile of flaming human putrid flesh for three years and then say, oh, I'm Christian now, I moved on. That's not how forgiveness works. Forgiveness is the people you hurt who forgive you after you've asked for forgiveness. You can't just say, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. That's what the, the Catholic Church used to do in the 16th century with the indulgences, back when rich people could buy the forgiveness of Christ by paying uh, priests directly with cash money so that they could just kill someone or rape someone, and then they would be able to still go to heaven because, oh, you're forgiven. It's that those days are over and Bloho has never apologized to anyone. And again, I repeat myself, but for the people who wonder why I make those videos, it's because he's never apologized and he is still to this day hurting people. And therefore he needs to be exposed because he's a terrible person. But so the entire Christian thing was that. And he kept it up like two days, like in actuality, because he stopped the drama video, but if you looked at his comment, he was still trashing Alpha Destiny. He was still trashing whoever he could trash. He was still being a, a prick to his subscribers. There's no better term. He's just a prick. He's just uh, constantly passive aggressive. I, I know, I know that most people who watch him, watch him to troll him. I get it. But I know that there are some people that sort of sneak into the lot or they don't, they're not in on the joke and they think that he's a real coach. And they get talked down and they're okay with it. What type of pathetic, mediocre mindset is that? Just because the guy has a YouTube channel, suddenly he's your new god and he can talk to you the way he wants to? That is way beyond me. But that's this, this entire Christian saga was this. It basically lasted a month. And then Bloho just moved on, never speaking about it again. And he's that type of, you know, that the, the enlightened atheist. Most, he gives off that vibe. You know those people who think that they're better because they don't believe in God? He is that type of, uh, of individual because this is usually the type of person that not necessarily cannot elevate themselves into believing into a higher being, but they understand that by making fun of Christians or Muslims or whatever, they are going to create a sense of moral superiority because they are... They believe in science. They don't believe in the God that doesn't exist. And the bro was like this. He made fun of Christianity for how many years? And then when it's convenient, he flip-flopped and he was a Christian for a month. This is the type of person we're talking about. He has no integrity because he's not a person. He's an empty husk. And he fills it up with whatever he thinks is going to get him accepted. And it never works because people see through it. I'm surprised he didn't wear a cross during that time. That's typically the type of stuff he would do. Uh, we'll see that again, but he constantly tries to reinvent his uh, identity, of course, because he hates who he is. And he went through insane phases. I mean, the Christian one is, is one of, the, it's one of the, the least offensive one. Of course, there was the stolen valor that was probably the worst one and the, the most common and the most well-known. But there are, there are some that are least discussed and that I want to get to. But beyond that, it's something very interesting here because he still does it to this day and I've seen him do that very recently. Blahino forces association. And what I mean by that is, you've, you know people like this in your life. You know the people who name drop, the type of people who are going to try and have them like you have you like them, sorry, by citing someone that is influential or famous because they think that it is going to connect, uh, connect them and create a connection with their name and therefore it makes them more, you know, believable, more charismatic, etc. This is, it's a classic, of course, and pathological liars tend to do that a lot. But Bloho takes it up a notch because his circle of influence is in YouTube fitness. And therefore, the names he drops are names in YouTube Fitness. And I want you to understand one thing. Bloho was the top dog of the industry. I know it's tough to believe for people who are now on the YouTube Fitness where Affinex and Greg Doucette are the big men and they lead the show, quote-unquote. But back in the days when this entire operation was still small, 
Bloho was at the top. And he got at the top with Nadi or Not videos, which, surprise, surprise, people with the biggest channels nowadays still do Nadi or Not. I wonder why. Maybe it's because it's the one thing that works. I'll make a full video about Nadi or Not explaining why they're stupid. But in terms of raw popularity, he was there. And if you don't believe me, go on his channel, go to his oldest videos, check them out, and look at the comments. Look at who you find in the comments. You will find all of the top YouTubers of today. Omar, Alpha Destiny, The Golden One, they're all in there. And you know what they're doing? They're playing with his balls. All nut huggers of Blahino. And I'm not saying that to blame them. I'm not saying that it's bad. I mean, I do the same thing. Only difference is I comment and most of my comments are trolls. But that's beyond the point. What I want to say by that is there was a time where the YouTube fitness galaxy gravitated around the sun and that sun was Bloho's bald head. And keep in mind that everyone was sucking up to him. Everyone. All of the people who hate him today. And this shows one of two things. Either they actually got fooled into thinking he was a competent individual back in the days, or they knew all this time that he was a fragile psychopath and a liar, but they didn't care because he had all of the subscribers, he had all of the hype, and he had, he had all of the clout, like Zoomers would say. Which, I think it's the second one. I hope it's the second one. Because you can say that Insight is 2020. I started watching Bloho when those guys started watching him as well. I could immediately tell that he was a fraud and that he had a problem and that he was not to be believed. So if they did not... What does it show about their intellectual abilities? Maybe not the sharpest, maybe not the greatest. And it also is a lesson to YouTube fitness as a whole. The top dog doesn't stay the top dog very long. And usually when they fall, they get exposed and they fall hard. Of course, Blahino is a case study because no one has fallen from grace as much as he has. No one. Remember that he got to 40 or 50,000 subscribers really, really quickly. And he's stagnated since then. Look at all of the guys I just cited. Alpha Destiny has, what, 300,000 subs? The Golden One is at 100,000. Omar Izov has, what, a million? I haven't checked in a while. They are all way above him. They completely mug him into oblivion at this point. Why? Because they're actually pretty cool guys. You know, they look good, they're strong, they have good content, and therefore they grew. How bad do you have to be to get a 50,000 subscribers head start by abusing Nelly on other videos and still not be able to make it? He should be the boss of the industry by now. He should be at the very top with the Jeff Cavalier and the Greg Doucet. Look at where he is. He barely breaks a thousand views per video. How? How can you be so incompetent as an adult? Because understand that he is the classical type of person that was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. His family was well off. He was most likely set for life with a good education that he should have taken into something. He's 50, so he's sort of a boomer. He was born when the economy was still good and getting a job and going to college was dirt cheap. He made nothing out of it. I repeat myself. How? It's, I think that even if I tried... Even if I tried to sabotage my life, I wouldn't be able to do it as well as he did. It's not possible. This is his one and only talent. He is the opposite of Midas. Midas would touch everything, uh, would turn everything he touched into gold. Blahino touches everything he touches into crap, into turds. It's, it's an insane ability. And I'm rambling here, but it's insane how much I have to say about the guy because he blows my mind. Forcing association, yes. Why did I start with this? Well, first off, I started to explain the entire uh, history of Blahino and the fact that he was actually in contact with a lot of YouTubers back in the days. And then he fell off because he got exposed, his content was not growing uh, his channel anymore, and all of these guys were just shooting up to the side. Imagine how much frustration and anger this tiny pee, -pee dude must have felt when he saw Alpha Destiny's channel growing. Because understand that if we're talking about nut huggers, Alpha Destiny was up there. Like I like Alex, but he didn't delete his comments. If you want a good laugh, go back to Bloho's old videos. Look at uh, <laughs> look at Alex's comments. 
this is bro nosing on a professional level and bro who was even talking down to him it was quite quite a sight alex was still young back in the day so we're going to forgive him but you see that you see the relationship and you see how on a low level alex was and then he just blew up and he blew up with what some would consider gimmicks which i don't think it's true i think the marketing was a gimmick but it's the reason why Blahino hates him so much is because at some point, Bloho was able to feel his ego because he was like, oh, look, this guy is looking up to me. Ha ha ha. I'm so, I'm so I'm better than him. I'm the alpha. And suddenly alpha just shoot up and his channel exploded. And now Bloho just detests him because he alpha has done everything that he wanted. He actually made a successful YouTube channel. And so that all of those videos calling him a dwarf and a manlet that comes from that. Because if you look at it, it's projection. Blahino is two inches taller than Alex. He has a smaller frame than Alex. He's weaker than Alex on most lifts. And some people might say, oh, but Alex doesn't squat. Yeah, he doesn't want to. But look at his numbers when he used to. He would be a good powerlifter if he wanted. And so all of that is pure jealousy on the part of Blahino. And across the board, that's what drives him through life. He started making Nati or not because he was jealous of the people he was making videos about because they looked good. This is the entire hypocrisy of the guy. He was taking drugs back then. Just as much drugs as these guys that look good. But he didn't get the result because he's lazy, he doesn't diet, he doesn't train. And therefore, he found a way to exteriorize all of that frustration by calling them out on camera. And it got him popular. And he couldn't capitalize on that popularity because he got exposed eventually for being... Who he is, in reality, is just his real identity that makes it so that he just isn't likable at all. But that weird thing that he does where he always tries and be connected with people in negative or positive ways has been kept up. I mean, most of YouTube fitness is his enemy because he made it so. But some of these guys were his friends, like Elgin, um, that guy that I forgot that had a, a meltdown recently, uh, the black dude. Physic of Greatness, whatever, I don't watch his channel. Uh, Pump Chaser, I think, something like this, who is supposedly still friends with Blahino, even though Blahino hates black people. I will never understand the logic behind that. But in terms of forcing the association, there are also people who are neutral towards Bloho. Because at this point, and it's the reason why I keep making these videos, by the way, some people don't know who he is. Because there's a, an endless new uh, amount of uh, beginners that enter YouTube fitness. And since he's completely irrelevant, unless you look up his videos, that expose him, you will never actually know who he is. And so there are some names that either didn't really have a good idea of who Bloho is, or sort of fooled into thinking that he was popular because he had a big channel with fake subscribers, or who just, you know, were completely unaware. So in terms of uh, meaningful associations that we can note, one that I want to talk about is Bugenhagen, because there was a time where Eric and Bloho were chums, apparently on surface. And that is the trap and the trick of Blahino. Because you see, he doesn't really give a chance to people. He, he makes you his friend and you're not even aware. And what he's done with Bugenhagen is he made several videos about him. And at some point, Eric, who I think didn't know who Blow was, just posted a comment on one of his videos. And that was enough for Jason to try and misconstrue an entire friendship the, between the two, a communication, a connection, knowing, quote unquote, because I don't really know the guy, but knowing who Rick is, I highly doubt that he would be in good terms with Blahino. But Blahino created that entire timeline of, or best friend with Bugenhagen and oh yeah, we share training tips and he thinks my methods are good and he thinks I'm strong and wow, it's look at me guys, I'm, I'm an alpha just like your Rick. Which of course never happened because Rick, the second he was aware of who Bloho was, cut communication and just distanciated himself immediately, which is, it's classic, that's always how it goes. But it's so pathetic to see how desperate Blow is for recognition and for fame that he will always try to attach himself to the big names. People who hate his guts. Jeff Nippert hates Blow. To this day, he still in his videos posts digs and memes about Blow. He has millions of subs, 
Most of the time, no one even catches it in the video, and yet he still does it. Why? Because he detests the guy. Because Bloho has made videos calling out or attacking everyone in the industry, and therefore they all hate him. And I say, oh, that's not necessarily the case, because as you see, Bogenhagen was sort of roped in, he didn't really have a choice or a word, but there are other people who seem to sort of know who Blow is, but they are still in good terms, quote-unquote, and there's a, there's a time A and time B when it comes to these people. I'm not necessarily going to name some of them because I respect them, I know they're good people, and I know they didn't know what they were doing. They, they didn't have the information and the cards in hands. And most of them have cut ties. But what happened was, some of these people were part of the, and these are big quotation marks, table of coath that apparently Blahino had every Tuesday, where apparently he was on Skype with other coath and they would discuss RPE, and did you see the new paper that says that if you do a hip hinge with a 45 degree angle and then you do a superset with bended elastics, it's going to activate the neurological patterns for knee flexions, ha ha ha, all of that good stuff that actually does nothing in reality. And uh, it, if you look at the way, what it paints in your head, when I close my eyes and I think about the, the table of Koth, I think about two things. I think about the round table of Camelot with Bloho as King Arthur with a, a, a pink dildo as a sword and all of the Koth around the table. Or I think about the Last Supper with Blahino at the center and all of YouTube fitness just around him, you know, looking at him up like he's the Messiah. Of course, all of that is in my head and it's in Bloho's head and in your head now because I just inserted it. But in reality, what most likely happened is that he would just exchange messages with these guys. And those guys were actually well known on YouTube Fitness. They were powerlifting icons, powerlifting kof. One guy that I can name because he, he's completely distantiated now is uh, Candido. Candido used to be in contact with Bloho. And the fun part about Candido too is that when Bloho was starting to lose steam and Canido was blowing up because he makes great content and he's a, an amazing powerlifter, Bloho was trying to suck up to him and he was like, let's collab, let's collab, because they live in the same area. And therefore, Canido wasn't super hot about it. You could tell he was like, I don't know about it. And they were, I don't know if the video was deleted, but there was a video where Canido was talking about Bloho and he was like, oh yeah, I met him once. He's a... Uh, He's a little special, and you could tell he wanted to say autistic. Like, he is autistic. Not special, not alpha, not Chad. He's not the tough guy. He's just, and again, so, sorry for the Zoomer terminology here, cringe. He's the type of person that just makes you uncomfortable. You want to leave the room. So maybe he does have a presence when he walks into a room, but it's because people want to leave the room immediately. One, to avoid the weird stares that Bloho does. You see the stares at the camera? where he thinks it's intense and he's like an alpha male, but in reality it's really creepy, or it's the stench. He walks into a room and the room empties itself because the windows cannot be opened wide enough. I digress. But the entire Candido saga was that eventually Candido was aware again, cut ties, it's the same story again and again, and nowadays they're not in contact anymore. But there were smaller channels in the powerlifting realm that I'm not going to cite that were actually connected with Bloho that did not reject him, that sort of were okay with being associated with him. And those are the type of people that, similarly to me in a sense, like to troll, but they, mis they misunderstood what Bloho was. They thought he was a troll. He's not a troll. He's a pathetic excuse for a human being. He doesn't troll. Trolling is for fun. If it's if it's truthful, if you say something out of jealousy or hatred, you're not trolling, you are just being hateful. And that's what was Bloho was. But those guys didn't realize, I think, because they didn't have enough information or, you know, enough recul, as we would say in my language. They didn't have the insight, basically. And the thing, too, is that there was a contrarian sentiment growing, too, because a lot of people, if, you, if so, they, they like someone, they sort of like it and you say that person is a bad person, they are going to be the type of uh, individual that are going to have a knee-jerk reaction and they are going to like the person more because you were trying to tell them to not like it, in a sense. It's the same for behaviors in life. If you want to hear more about it, it's 
very akin to demoralization where if someone has been lied to long enough and you try to correct the lie, they're going to actually believe in the lie even more. It's, this is a topic for another video, but those people kept up with Bloho, they were part of his table of cough, etc. I think they were also fooled by his strength numbers because he uses fake plates. I don't know if I'm going to get to the fake plates in this video, but I have conclusive proof and evidence that he uses fake plates. And I will get to that eventually, but at this point, it's 100% confirmed that none of his lifts are real. But back to the, the cough thing, the tipping point was, at some point, Bloho, again, demonstrating that he every single day that is made manages to turn into a worse person made a post i think it was a facebook post it wasn't the video where he praised the shooter of the mosque in new zealand if you remember there was some deranged guy who entered the mosque with an ak or a, a, a rifle and he started shooting innocent people and uh, kids and everything and bloho praised him of course because he hates muslims and he's a racist and therefore, the people who were still connected with him just cut him off and were like, okay, that's it. I think they, they didn't really know if Bloho was being serious about the entire racism thing. And that sort of just pushed them over the edge and they just stopped completely connecting with him, at least publicly. I don't know if they're still in contact privately. I would encourage them to stop talking to him privately too. But of course, I'm not about that. They do whatever they want. So they disconnected them. Uh, they disconnected from him. And you have other people that are that I would also classify as not being aware, like for the people who know Iron Lou, the strong man, I think he likes Bloho because Bloho hates vegans and he likes to troll vegans, so he likes Bloho. Again, he I think he has a black girlfriend. He really needs to look into Bloho's history of just pointing rifles at black people and maybe it would change in his mind. I think he has other problems to handle right now, so it might not be super necessary right now, but that closes this entire thing. Look at how long that was. That was two lines on my piece of paper. Two lines. I, th there's a, there is a fellow ment enthusiast in the comments that said that it was insane that there was enough material for six episodes on Bloho. There is enough, enough material for 15, maybe even 20. Look at this. Look at this, this coffee stain piece of paper. I started here. I started here. We're here. I did two lines and all of that is brand new stuff I haven't spoken about before in these videos. It's insane. But all the better for you, I guess, because it means that you're going to keep getting episodes and all the worse for Blohino because he blows his top every time these videos are released. I really encourage you, stick around. When they're released, stick around because at some point you will see the dislikes go up by 40 and then you see comments pop up and it's Bloho just in front of his computer just raging. What he did, what he did last time was actually interesting because he sort of tries different approaches. He tries to insult. He told me that he was going to sue me, even though he doesn't know my name. He told me also that he would send his buddies to my door for a, a friendly visit, which you have no friends, bro. Who are you, who are you going to send? The suck accounts? They're not real. Please. <laughs> the schizophrenia can only go so far. And in terms of schizophrenia, it was also at some point quite fascinating to see that he was posting with the characters from Hunger Games, the, 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 the Katniss Everdeen and the Pitna Milark, I think, which are like lovers in the show for the people who know the show. And he was answering to himself, like, I suspect that he uses those accounts to role play. And I'm not kidding. I think he comments on videos and he's like, oh, Pita, my love. I found you again, oh, Katniss, we should, re we should be reunited. And he did that in my comments. Very strange. You can go back. It's in the previous video. It's still there. And I know for a fact that these are his accounts. So again, I don't know where we were going with this. For the people who've been following his channel, we're entering what I would like to call the dark age of Blahino because he, he, it's over. Like it is now over. The channel is dead. I'll continue making those videos because I think he'll never actually give up, but it's always interesting to see the, the devolution of his personality as well. I would be surprised if he makes it another five years, honestly. Okay, all of that was, as I said, just one line. 
Let's, let me check the time because that last thing, I mean, this episode was insane. I don't know what you think about it, but some of those revelations is what I wanted to talk about the most. Let me just check the time. Oh boy. Okay. 45 minutes. Okay. Oh, okay. I, ca I can't. I want to say that last thing, but it's too long. The last thing is too long. So just for reference... Next week, I'm going to talk about this entire Jason Bloho movement and the entire anti-Jason Bloho movement, most likely, because they're the ones who actually expose him at first, because it's so interesting. When you look at the timelines, it gives you so many information about who Jason really is, but it's something that is going to take 15 minutes to develop, so I can't start now. But don't act to spoil, because this is an extra episode for Christmas, so you are already blessed. Look at the date of this video. A month from now, there will be another one and another one and another one and another one until the work is done. Have a very minty Christmas. See you soon.